Hey man, hiya. Graphs of functions, exercise 3P, number 9, another form of higher question. Slightly more involved this time. So the first part says, given this function, I've actually got it stated explicitly here, and here's its graph. First part is, what are the coordinates of A and B? Well, here's the function, so you can write them down. Well, A is going to be easy, because A is on the y-axis. And on the y-axis, so put it down A, on the y-axis, you know that x equals 0. And if x equals 0, then putting 0 into the formula will give you the y-coordinate. So the y-coordinate will be 0 take away 2 squared plus 1. So that's negative 2 squared is 4, plus 1 is 5. Which means A is the point 0, 5. Then B. Now, B is the turning point at the bottom. But you don't actually need to use <coughs> differentiation and to find it because of the squared form here. B is the lowest answer you get from this equation, from this calculation. And since a square can only get as low as 0, after that it's always positive, that means the lowest value is 1. So I know straight away that this is the case for B. I know that at B, Y equals 1 when that bracket equals 0, when X minus 2 is 0. If it's any other number, then it'll be something to add on to want to make it bigger. In other words, when X equals 2. So B is going to be the point 2, 1. So that'll be the first bit. Now the second part says, there's another function, g of x, I'll put it down here, equaling 5 plus 4x minus x squared, which looks like this. Now, it says, this g of x can be written as m plus n times f of x. What are the values of m and n? Well, straight away from this one, you can see that when x is 0, it cuts at 5, so they're both cutting at 5. The other point is, what would that turning point be at the top? Because you can't just assume that these are equally spaced above and below 5, if I put in those numbers. So that this is 4 below, but is that 4 above, or is it something just like 3.5? You can't assume it's the same without determining what it is exactly. But what this does say is this. G of x is this transformation of f of x, which involves no change in position. So that means that g of x must have its turning point at the same position, which is 2. So I know that <coughs> at g of x, it must be x equals 2. So if x equals 2, that means that g of 2, I'll put it in that way, is going to be 5 plus 4 lots of 2 minus 2 squared. So that's going to be 5 plus 8 minus 4, which is 9. So the turning point here is going to be 2, 9. So that there is going to be 2, 9. Now you can see that that's 4 above and that's 4 below, which means there's not been any change to the width of that vertically, so that since it's upside down, you know that n must be negative 1. I know that straight away. That implies that n is negative 1. Which means that what's happened then is g of x is going to be some number minus f of x. And that's indeed what happens. If you flip that over, then that turning point is going to go to, to negative 1. And then the m means the amount is lifted up. Well, you then just lift it up from 2, negative 1 all the way to 2, 9. So that's a lift up of 10, which means that m is going to be the distance it needs to go up. That's 9 take away the negative 1, which is going to be 10. So m is going to equal 10. It asks for what's the values of m and n, so that would do, or you could write it out again. g of x is equal to 10 minus f of x. Yeah, that's question nine.